Well, welcome back everyone to the No Such Thing as a Fish comic relief marathon. Uh, we just had one of those interesting moments where a few things have happened, probably worth recapping right now. Um, please keep donating to our fund. It's at comicrelief.com slash fish. Any money that you send is going to be used for extraordinary purposes, for different charities, helping people who are very needy right now, particularly in this pandemic time, not getting enough of the charity sector funded in the way it used to. Uh, this is our chance to help raise the money up so that, that people can have money to get better. Um, sorry. I know that was ridiculous, Andy. You're laughing at it. I know. <laughs> I know. But listen, because I'm trying to get my head around what just happened. So here's here's two things that just happened. Emma Freud and Richard Curtis have a hedgehog in their house that needs a name. <laughs> now, if you would like to be in the running to name that hedgehog, anything that you donate from here on in on the Comic Relief page that I just mentioned, comicrelief.com slash fish, uh, if you put either your name or just anonymous, but put a slash and then put the name that you'd like to name the hedgehog, and we're going to present the names at the end of the show when Richard comes on at the end, and you can name the hedgehog. Uh, they'll pick one of the winners, and you can you can now have a hedgehog with your name <laughs> in Richard Curtis and Emma Freud's house. The second thing that happened is Carrie Mulligan was just on the show. Carrie Mulligan starred in an iconic episode of Doctor Who as Sally Sparrow, a character that all Whovians know. And Sally Sparrow's coat is going to be put up for auction uh, to one of you watching right now. So we're going to get the details of how you can bid on that. It also comes with a cup of tea with Carrie herself as she hands the coat over to you. Uh, so two big things that just happened. Very exciting. But um, what we're most excited about is our facts. So that's what we do. That's what this podcast is. And it's time to get to fact number 28. And we're going to bring in, we're heading back down to Australia once again to meet actor and comedian. It's Natalie Tran. Hello. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me and congratulations. I've been ducking in and out of the stream and it's very impressive watching you all power on. So, yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate yeah. it. Let's um let's get to your facts. So, I'll say it again and uh we'll get it from you. It is time for fact number 28. <laughs> yep. Wow, we've done a lot of facts and it is Natalie Tran. 56% of people have Googled themselves. <laughs> okay. Is that higher that, or low? That feels low to me. Yeah. It feels low. And I do now want to say, I think that's an old fact, but I looked up another thing that was a little bit more recent and it had a, a different breakdown if you want to hear it. Yeah. yeah. And it was 48% of Gen Z have Googled themselves, about 57% of millennials, 45% Gen X, and 37% baby boomers. Only okay. 37% of baby boomers. Wow. Oh, they can't turn it on, can they? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but again, what was the, what's the youngest generation you said? That? Was it Generation Z? Yeah, Gen Z, 48%. But I, th I feel like that's low. Low. That's it's low. low. Mm. What are the other 52% of Gen Z doing? What are they up to that we don't know about? <laughs> they, they don't use Google anymore. Google's oh, so old. Oh, no. It's oh, so yeah. old. Are they just TikToking themselves? Can you TikTok yourself? <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Well, when I was reading about this, there was a great thing where it said they referred to it as self-Googling, otherwise known as ego surfing. I was like, that's a great term. Ego, ego surfing. surfing. Yeah. Isn't that great? So they contribute it to a rise of... Uh, growth in narcissism in society and as well, I guess, a concern that we all have of what people see when they Google our names. So I Googled everyone here. Okay. Mm. <laughs> but oh you all boy. had really, really nice Google searches. And they also said that this was tied into people's concern with what their online brand was. And you all have, in my opinion, very nice, consistent online branding. So oh, congratulations. Yeah, that's good. Because obviously I've never Googled myself, so I wouldn't know that without... Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, have, when was the last time you all Googled yourself? I'm just going to assume you fall into this percent. It was yesterday. About, about five minutes ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anytime there's a break, really, in the show. Just, uh, uh, <laughs> I remember doing the worst thing and, like, someone asking me if I was free one day and I Googled our tour um, <laughs> list to see that. if I was free that day. That was. <laughs> Did you do it in front of them and show them, no, I'm not no, free? I, I yeah, said, I'll, I'll just check. And they're like, are you checking on your phone? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's on here. It's on my diary. <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. I, mean, I, wonder, I wonder if they, people, these were self-reported, um, self self-Googlers, because I 
can't mm. believe people haven't. Even just to find out if someone's got the same name as you, you know, has mm. a thing yeah. got my name. Surely everyone's done that. I well, like that spin, Anna, the spin of, like, the people who aren't Googling themselves that you're responsible and they're unimaginative. <laughs> <laughs> I like that spin. Like it should be higher. Yeah. I have to Google myself or rather go to my Wikipedia page often because usually during one of the episodes of No Such Thing as a Fish, one of these three will say something outrageous about me and then say, put it on his Wikipedia, and then suddenly <laughs> it's there. My name on Wikipedia isn't even my real name. It says I'm called Daniel Indiana Craig Schreiber, a.k.a dicks and that's not my name indiana's not in my name but it's there and he said i was a big fan of nazi myths that went up for a month. You, have, you have an unnatural interest in nazi mythology dan yeah. and I, I think that people should know no i don't <laughs> they, they should it they, they should know lucky. they should know <laughs> um natalie you said ego surfing is the term uh, the, or yeah. that's a, a, another word for it so I, I looked up that word because I, I saw it as well in reading about this and it was coined in 1995. So, mm. you know, really early internet days. Uh, it was in an article for Wired. This is, I think, the first usage of it. And it was in, you know, hey, what's the hip new internet slang this week was the article that people were writing at the time. So lots of the stuff from this one article has stuck around. Um, eyeballs. Mm. You know, there are plenty of new eyeballs available in this time slot for What's that mean? Like attention, people's attention. You know, we need uh, eyeballs. Okay. Yeah. Um, the dead tree edition for the paper version of a publication. Like, oh, yeah. What's are these the... all common phrases? Well, I use the dead tree edition book. I work for uh, a print magazine. I work for yeah. literally a dead tree organization. So, okay. yeah. um, but the only one of this article that didn't make it in was huge oh. pipes. And oh, but I use that every day. <laughs> 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 but I do what? collect organs. <laughs> what does that what, mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Huge pipes is if you've got a high bandwidth internet connection and they said oh. su that such and such doesn't look half bad if you've got huge pipes. And um, that yeah. is not. Wow. You have a sort of sleazy <laughs> hand motion. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's not hey, safe. <laughs> stuff. Wow. It's interesting That's that people amazing. extrapolate from the Googling themselves stat that people are getting more narcissistic because there is no comparison, right? We don't know how much people were Googling themselves in 1850. We, yes. we have no idea how much Virginia Woolf would have Googled herself. I reckon that 98%. What's, I think the equivalent is walking around the church graveyard and looking for someone with the same name as you. Oh, yeah. That's less fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, th oh, that old habit. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on we've all done it we've all no, done it I'm, I'm so sorry we can't just like what, <laughs> what? it's like look 90 percent of boomers have done it <laughs> um, i don't it's know more, it's more like scouring every single newspaper isn't it you have to buy every newspaper and book every day and read it front mm. and back yeah. and, like, if you're in it That's yeah what the yeah but I admit that I Google myself predominantly around my birthday to check how old I am. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know, but you know, after like 21, you stop counting. And so when people ask me, I'm always like 27, I'm 31, I'm 30, and I don't know. And it's just much quicker to Google and then it tells you wow. straight away. Oh, yeah. But is that, oh, yeah. it, how does Google, how does Google know? Have you told Google? Or well, I guess there's a Wikipedia. So for a while, my birthday was incorrect. I think because of the difference of Australian time zones. And I didn't care because I'm like, it's only a day off. Like the age is still correct. Like that doesn't matter. Like it's still the right year and yeah. stuff. So as long as it's, they can tell me how old I am. I find that a very yeah. useful. Thing. I don't know. It sounds like you're feigning a sort of handy ignorance here. Like it feels like <laughs> when, when am I? When was I born again? Oh, <laughs> I'm only twenty five. <laughs> sure. oh. Whatever internet. I, I always do that when I go bowling, and they're like, "What shoe size are you?" Are? I'll just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or when someone asks me how much I'm worth, I Google it. A whole bunch of things. <laughs> James, are you just updating your Wikipedia with sort of knowledge you might need for when you're out and? Fun fact, huge pipes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, is there another is there another famous Natalie Tran? Or so, are you the only one? So here's the thing, there's actually another Natalie Tran in Australia who um there's several, sorry, I didn't mean there's just one. There'd be several. But there is one who is uh, who I get calls for to my family home because the Vietnamese community is quite small. And so every now and then when people can't contact me, like a producer or something, and then they fight, whatever, they call my house 
And this other Natalie Tran is a uh, beauty pageant contestant. She's also, sorry, I don't mean to say that's just what she does. She's also a presenter. She's an actor. She's great. Um, but uh, she's very attractive. And when people call my house and they ask for Natalie Tran, my mum goes, oh, yeah, that's my daughter. And then they go, she's so beautiful. And my mum goes, wrong one. So my mum <laughs> knows that. She knows if they compliment the books. She's like, wrong one. Like, Great. That's harsh. That's hilarious. I'll put you through to the right, Natalie. Yeah, no, she is. <laughs> and it's really sad because, you know, there's a, a, a show called Play School. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if you get it, but it's like Play School is like a children's show. And I was so excited because I think they contacted me once and they're like, do you want to be on Play School? And I never heard from them again. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they met the other Natalie Tran. I was like, oh, that was so exciting. But if you see right. photos of the other Natalie Tran going up around your mum's house, that's when you know you're in <laughs> trouble yes. for the parental affection. <laughs> it's actually her age that I'm referring to. And she's actually much younger than me. It's quite upsetting. But, yeah. No, but I like the idea of an online – sorry, and I also checked out all your Wikipedias to see if any oh of you had gosh. a – to see if any of you had a – uh, controversy section because I think that's ah. that's the best section of anyone's. None of you had one. It was very disappointing. Oh, if your Nazi yeah. stuff, Dan, didn't come up. <laughs> it's not. It's just in the normal section. It's all in the controversy <laughs> section. <laughs> Natalie, it was literally the second line of my Wikipedia. <laughs> On twenty eighth of April, he's in a podcast and he loves the Nazi myth. <laughs> <laughs> Classic oh. dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, this whole thing. Think, it, it, do, we do we? I think Dan's the only one with a Wikipedia page, isn't he? No, oh. we all do now. I think. Yeah, someone created it for you guys. We're the same. That's a copy paste job, guys. Come on. We there's nothing that distinguishes <laughs> us really except gender. No, I think mine says his um, his use of puns has been reviewed positively. Oh, that's a final wow. sentence. Not on this show, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, so bizarre. Just this whole thing of your your family getting calls for this other Natalie Tran. Um, I, I remember this story, which was in America, in Brooklyn. There was a family that were called Mr. and Mrs. Parker, um, a Andrew and Suzanne Parker. And they started out of nowhere. It was in 1989, getting lots of mail addressed to Peter Parker, Spider-Man, <laughs> right? And so they would get phone calls uh, because they were obviously listed in the phone book at the time in 89. And they would say, the people would call you like, is Peter Parker there? And, and they'd be like, yeah, okay, very funny. You know, we, we are in the park. But no, they're not here. And they would hang up. And just letters kept coming for years and years and years. And they had no idea who had sort of made this prank erupt. And then they discovered that by absolute total coincidence, there was a issue was Spider-Man that came out, which gave the home address for Peter Parker, which oh. was their address in Brooklyn. And the fact that they were called Parker had wow. nothing to do with why these people no. were writing to yeah. them. They had no wow. idea. So, um, yeah, and then it turns out that the neighbor who lived across the road from them was called Osborne, which was the villain of Peter Parker's uh, it, so, yeah. If, if Tim Minchin is still listening, you could believe in a higher power now. <laughs> One in a billion. Yeah, I call absolute rubbish. They are definitely hiding Spider Spider-Man. <laughs> what are people writing to Spider-Man? Like to write a letter to Spider-Man? Yeah, good You've question. You've got to have a very steady hand when your bus is hanging off the edge of the bridge <laughs> to... Uh, yeah, it's not quite the bat signal, is it? It's not the most important. <laughs> 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 Put this in the post box for me. <laughs> He'd use the spider web. That's what he would do. So, James, I'm treading on your punter. I like it. Um, <laughs> I was thinking it must it's quite stressful googling yourself as a as an actual famous person and I think especially if you're a boomer so um Patrick I was reading an interview with Patrick Stewart a couple of years ago and it was when it was when he was asked to respond to an article in the Guardian that had mistakenly referred to him as gay and they said oh oh sorry you're not it turns out you're straight and he said it's fine I was delighted at least I didn't wake up to the internet thinking I was dead again <laughs> that, that must put you off googling yourself after a certain age when every time yeah. you type your name it goes oh patrick stewart dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you guys remember um google wax there was a thing yeah, well, yeah. Start yeah. Google. one result dave, yeah. Gorman. Yeah. dave, dave Gorman, Gorman did a thing and it was basically you put two words in and there's only ever going to be one result yeah, uh, and that's called a Google whack. And there used to be quite a few of them when Google was in its infancy, and now there's not really any at all. So, like the ones that Dave Gorman has, I think, include Francophile namesakes, yeah, and Dork Turnspit <laughs> and stuff like that. 
uh, unconstructive superegos, but Franco File <laughs> Namesakes now has more than 1,000 hits on Google for those two things. Right. And it's most of them are people saying, this is a Google Whack or this was a Google oh, Whack. Yeah. So as soon as people find them, they tend to stop being Google Whacks. Well, uh, but I did find one uh, because oh, we were talking yeah. about um, about sea slugs earlier on, uh, whose technical <laughs> name is Nudie Brank. Uh, and so I searched for Napoleon Land Nudie Branks, which is two very unusual words that we've used in this 20 hours. And that is a Google Whack. There's only oh. one here. Ah. Um, and it's just some weird PDF site, which I couldn't actually get on because I think it was going to give me a massive virus. But it was, <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a thing, at least. Well, check, check this out as, a, as another uh, tie into this conversation. So Francophile namesakes, mm. I think you said. I think, so I'll get the details of this wrong, but the main thing is right. Dave Gorman heard about Google Whack as a result of someone finding that he was a Google Whack. So two words appeared on his website, dave.gorman.com, that appeared nowhere else. So the person told him, did, asked him, did you know you're a Google Whack? And it was an Australian, actually, who uh, messaged him with that. So then Dave thought, I'm going to do a Google Whack. He does it, and he finds someone. And it's the next one, which you said, James, which was... Um, uh, Dark Turnspit. Yeah, so it, it, let's say it was that. It might not be, but... So he writes to the person who has the Google Wag, and he then says, can I come and say hi? So he goes and meets the person because they've been emailing back and forth because they sounded interesting. So Dave Gorman then goes to his house in Camden, I think it was, and says to him, hey, why didn't you try and get a Google Wag? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, let's, let me try, let me try. So he then is Dave Gorman's Google Wag. He then does one, and he gets one. And he goes, look, I found the Google Wag. So Dave goes over and he looks at the site where the Google Whack is for, and he's going, hang on a second, I know this site. How do I know this site? And then he sees at the bottom, it says copyright for the site, Dave Gorman. <laughs> and the reason he knows this site is because the previous project he did called Are You Dave Gorman, where he met all of his namesakes, one of those guys was the guy who was now a Google whack from a random other guy. Yeah. It's it. What a coincidence! Oh, Mention. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's just an astonishing coincidence. That's and then so, so he good. flew out to France to see him. This Dave Gorman, who was Amazing. a Google whack from someone else. Oh, wait, you flew out to France to see him. Yeah, because he was that the Francophile. Was no. that the Francophile namesake? No, I don't no, think it so. Was, I think it was the dark. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I've got a question for you. I looked up a few other opinion surveys about um, life online. Oh, yeah. If someone was prepared to give you a million pounds if you stopped using the internet forever, would you do it? Uh, I don't think so. Open to open to suggestions. Is that pre-tax? Unfortunately, it's my job. <laughs> Is it's it pre it's, yeah, Dan. It's 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 a tax-free lump sum payment. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Dan's got a lot of bills coming up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the problem <laughs> is that all of our anyway. all of our work relies on the internet, right? So well, I think yeah, all the ones does. So basically, yeah. every single person who you ask that question to, except maybe a, a tree fella, would have to go. Am I going to make more or less than a million pounds in my life? through my work if less maybe i'll consider it yeah and that's what i'm trying to work out right now well, well, also lot. you need the internet to buy things you need it for everything don't you like oh you, you can your... you can get by in other ways without you've got a million you're walking around with a wheelbarrow with a million quid in it people are going to want to sell you stuff <laughs> yeah. you know yeah yeah okay yeah. Well, what do you reckon would you Natalie? do it Natalie? The only thing, the only thing I'm concerned about is if I can watch the news, like for big events. Like, uh, can I still watch? We got TV. No, I know, but you know, television. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this falls into the online categories. You now, television. Yeah. Um, is no. Television. It's quite. It's actually quite difficult to watch uh, television without the internet. So I'm just wondering if that class. I, the only mm. thing I would be really concerned about, to be honest with you, is watching big <laughs> news events because I would want to see those in my life. I would want to be able to see big mm. steps forward for. for you know, for mankind. Yeah. Like you'll, get that, you'll get that in the papers the next day, just because you're 24 hours behind the rest of the world. The, the dead, the dead tree, the dead tree. The dead tree. The dead tree. <laughs> the dead tree. <laughs> Natalie, you got a million quid. You can get a helicopter and just go to the big live events that are affecting humanity. <laughs> Andy, this million quid is going to last forever. A million quid is is a lot of Australian dollars. So this is very te obviously more tempting for me than it is for you guys. Oh uh, yeah, is this in pounds or Aussie, Andy? <laughs> and this is a million pounds, pounds sterling. Pounds. Pounds 
Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And no tax. No, no tax. tax. <laughs> National right. insurance. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's taken the million. <laughs> he's taken the million. I can't blame him. I <laughs> what a way to say goodbye to us. Yeah. <laughs> that wheelbarrow. As soon as he got a wheelbarrow, he was done. You know, he was very into pushing it around. Imagine yeah. if you're a wheelbarrow salesman and <laughs> that guy comes along. You're the only person who can't sell him anything. <laughs> this idiot with a million quid comes along and you can't sell him any of your words. <laughs> um, can I ask you? Oh, sorry. Don't mean to interrupt. Sorry. No, I was okay. I was going to ask if anyone had played The Sims. It ha it was going somewhere though. <laughs> no. I love this question. Yes. Okay. Right. So there was this. This is just on how people use technology and what it says about you. Um, there was a study done recently which looked at how people play The Sims, and then it did uh, made them fill in a questionnaire where the answers would give away how much of a psychopath they were. And this <laughs> won't come as a surprise, but the more of a psychopath you are in The Sims, the more of a psychopath you are in real life. Yes. So if you were you the kind of person who would like deliberately drown your husband and then <laughs> the not, not in sim world but you know, <laughs> i remember my um brother-in-law i played the sims with him and he did this thing which i thought was really cute where we hit some kind of glitch like he picked in a house that was it was a, there was a glitch in our game so the car never came to work to pick him up for work and he would get calls from his boss and the boss would be like if you don't come to work we're gonna fire you and so he got up and I watched him and I said, oh, I think this is a glitch. I think we need to move you into a new house. And he goes, no, it's fine. Maybe I missed it like a normal car. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you don't. And so he would get up earlier the next day and stand on the curb. And, play. and I was like, Aww. this isn't real life. Like you haven't missed the car. And so he just progressed, like just, get, and then he got fired. It was the saddest thing I ever saw. It was horrible. It's, 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 well, so he okay. sounds non-psycho. He sounds kind of like a pushover in, in <laughs> 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 talking about the people. There are quite a lot of people who commented below this about things they'd done. One person said, one time I killed the sim by drowning, then I made everyone show up to his funeral in swimwear. But <laughs> oh, wow. Very creative. Someone <laughs> else, wow. one time, someone else fancied a woman next door. Again, we're talking about in The Sims. Uh, <laughs> so instead of seducing her, I seduced her husband, invited him round to sleep with him, drowned him in a pool, then moved in with the wife, killed her children so I didn't ca have to care for them, lived happily ever after. And that, so it's good to watch these people play The Sims because you know that in real life they might actually do that. Yeah, oh, put them all on a list. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. on a list, 100%. Now, that's interesting. Yeah. Were you were you rough with your Sims? I was. Were you rough with your Sims characters? Anyone? I was incompetent. <laughs> I, they never achieved their full potential under my tuition. See, it all, it does ring true, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh, I have really... literally no idea what any of you are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a really there's a neighbour called Maximus, and he comes over and he checks on you as soon as you move into the neighbourhood. I, I miss my Sims. I feel really. I hope they're okay. <laughs> Do they I carry don't... on living? I, I really don't know what you're talking about, but I think I've covered it. <laughs> it's like, like a Tamagotchi, what... James. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know those things. When you um, finish the game, when you turn it off, do your people carry on living? As in, when you turn it on, if they aged? Or yeah, not. when you turn it off, you realise that you're like five years old and you've missed a lot of your life. No, I have no idea. Yeah. If they can... What a distressing uh. prospect you raised, James, of a world where all the Sims are 200 years old. <laughs> and they're, and they're all still there waiting for us. Well, that's, I think, like archaeologists in the future could open this up and they'd be like 20, there'd be a new society of yeah. Sims. I don't know. Oh, my oh, God, terrible. I like it. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you, you guys, because I'm quite curious about this, the idea of an online brand or a personal brand. I've only ever heard perhaps a handful of people use that phrase in real life. Do you feel that you have a brand that you project or is there a brand that you try and maintain or do you think about your image? Yeah, there are some buzzwords, sexy, classy. Yes. 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 <laughs> Nazi <laughs> met guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy classy Nazi. No, no, no brand. Not as a person, as the as the podcast we do, don't we? I guess. Yeah. But I think we I think we describe ourselves as nerds and dorks enough to say that that they are definitely attached to our brand. Yeah. Now. yeah. Does that mean that you would avoid things that are cooler than the brand because it would be confusing? Like, Andy, would, you Andy, would you um, Andy, would you avoid cool things? Would you say? Um, I, I'm not a cool person, so I'm going to throw out. Are going to be not? Uh, would you like take up skateboarding and listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so happens that I wouldn't do any of that stuff ever. So it's really brand aligned. I'm feeling really strong. Brand. I skate. I'm a skateboarder. I like to say I'm a skateboarder. Yeah. Occasionally, okay. I have a deck. Yeah. You like to say you're a skateboarder? Or as, in, as in, I'd like to say, like, I, I don't go every, I'll go <laughs> once every five months now because I'm older, but I, I'm a skateboarder in my no. head. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> On average, Dan, I've seen you enough days of your life. Page. Lights <laughs> oh, he's gone. <laughs> he's, gone. <laughs> he's gone. He's off to do some sick flips on his board. <laughs> A dolly? Is that I'll what one is? Do some ollie oops. <laughs> ollie, ollie, not dolly. Ollie. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, please repeat the insult. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just take your, take your elbow pads off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. The problem is that just been exposed here is that when uncool people do cool things, they aren't cool things anymore. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. It almost makes you less cool. Imagine Andy on a surfboard. It's he's not suddenly going to become cool. He's going to make surfing. <laughs> I'm a gravity <laughs> well. <laughs> we were to, weren't we talking about that the other day where you would where you would have companies seeding other brands to make oh, yeah. it uncool yeah. i thought I, I never checked it whether it was true or not because i just cut it in the end from the podcast but i thought that is she called honey g or honey honey g maybe yeah the rapper that, yeah that people were giving her um, handbags of a different brand to try and make the other brand seem less cool because she was hated for a little while. I don't know if it's true, but... Oh, because then we were talking about how John Major's wife um, ruined yes. Tease Made, destroyed Tease Made. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tease yeah. Made was it? very cool in the 80s, and then suddenly... God, what was she called? I've gone Norma. Norma, Norma. Maker. Yeah. Um, Natalie, we haven't asked about your brand. Oh, yeah. What's the brand? What's the trend brand? You know, I would love to have a brand, and, like, one thing that I... Like I, I, I desperately wish I could wear hats backwards. I feel like that would be a <laughs> like I feel like that would be so. I have I buy so many hats. What's going wrong with the the hair the the beak facing backwards? Doesn't work on you. I just feel like it gives you like a different kind of image. And um, but then if someone talked to me, I'd take like if someone looked at me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I wish I could stick with it. I actually dyed my hair pink a couple years ago and I felt like a huge fraud because I feel like if you have really brightly coloured hair, it suggests you're quite interesting. <laughs> and um, when people would talk to me in the street, they'd go, nice hair. I'd be like, oh, no. And then I'd run away <laughs> and I'd dye it back black because I was like, oh, this is really... Um, this is not who I am. I'm so sorry oh to have God. liked it. And then you friend. cover it with your hat <laughs> and then you take it off when they look at the hat. Oh, no. And then I hop on my skateboard and then I like <laughs> I go down the road <laughs> to the cemetery to look at my name. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think your brand might be psychologically confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, we need, to, we need to wrap up, unfortunately. Oh. That flew by. Natalie, thank you so much. Thank that was so such a yeah, fun that's chat really fun. and uh, really me. yeah really lovely to meet you as well and um hopefully we can chat to you again sometime as a group uh, we must chat more that was super fun <laughs> please <laughs> please don't do anything to my wikipedia page um, <laughs> awesome skater <laughs> <laughs> that's fine get that on there podcaster and kick-ass skater um well thank you so no. much and um we are going to be back in a few minutes, everyone, uh, but don't go. Our next guest is waiting in the wings. It is the brilliant comedian, Shappy Corsandy. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hello, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, now you have to pay. Please, please go to comicrelief.com slash fish and give us all of your money so that it can be spent on fabulous causes around the world. There are many more videos where these came from. So bring all of your money and give it to us. Link is below. Click on the link.